Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna tell you what I believe to be the purpose of life. And I'm not gonna dance around it, I'm not gonna talk in riddles, I'm just gonna tell you as directly as I possibly can. And if you're watching this and you're thinking, who does this guy think he is to tell me what's the purpose of life? Um, well, I agree with you. I'm not asking you to believe anything that I say just because I say it. None of this stuff comes from me, and you should absolutely uh, verify it and test it based on the things that you know, based on the higher sources that are available to you, based on whether or not it resonates with your own soul, because none of this is coming from me. This is coming from what I believe uh, is held in common by the major religions. It's been verified by a countless number of spirits, which if you want to learn more about that, check out the Spirits book by Alan Kardec. I'll put a link in the description. And also, it resonates with my own soul, with my own intuitive knowingness uh, accepts it as correct. So, of course, I recommend that you do the same sort of due diligence and don't just believe it because some guy on YouTube told you to. Okay, now, the purpose of life exists on two levels because life exists on two levels. When we think of life, usually we think about uh, this earthly existence from the time we're born till the time we die. Well, that's part of our life, but that's a, a very small part of our overall spiritual life. So, we have a purpose in our spiritual life, and it follows that a part of that purpose is served by this uh, individual physical life. So, and of course, both our, our broader purpose in our spiritual life and our narrow purpose in our physical life have to be aligned. So I'm going to tell you what both of those are. Now, I'll start with the broader purpose, the purpose of our spiritual life, at least this part of our spiritual life, is to purify ourselves to make ourselves perfect, both morally and intellectually, so that we are worthy of communion with God. This is what Jesus called being in the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of heaven. This is what the Hindus and the Buddhists call nirvana. This is also what Jesus talked about in the parable of the wedding feast, when he said that in order to be admitted into the feast, you have to be properly dressed. Well, our job right now is to get to that point where we are pure, that is, we are properly dressed for the wedding. And what happens after that, I don't know. We'll probably have some new purpose after we're admitted into the wedding, after we're already in communion with God. But for now, uh, we have our work cut out for us. We have plenty of work to do before we get to that point. Now, there are two ways that we have to perfect ourselves. That is, morally and intellectually. And ideally, you want to have a balance of the both. But it is possible to have uh, be imbalanced, to have one and not the other. I mean, you've probably known people who were, who were very morally upright, that were pure, that were kind, that were compassionate, but, but were not particularly smart. And then, on the other hand, you've probably also known people who were very smart, but were arrogant and rude and lacked empathy. Right. So it is possible to be imbalanced in those two elements, which is, is a place where I'm coming from. I, I kind of came to the realization recently that I was much more developed intellectually than I was morally, right? That my intellectual faculties seem to work pretty well, but uh, morally, you know, I have to knock myself in the head a few times to, to notice other people's suffering or to have empathy for other people or to, uh, you know, get rid of my pride. So, um, I, I need to work more on the moral side than on the intellectual side right now, I think. So, you need to have both, and ultimately, the two support each other. Ultimately, um, for example, you can only reach a certain point intellectually if your morals are in the gutter. And the reason for that is that the morality supports your intellectual development. So, for example, let's say you have a lot of pride. You have not developed the moral quality of humility yet. Well, if you uh, have a theory or you have a belief, you have some, some knowledge, you think, um, on the intellectual side that is mistaken because you were taught wrong, well, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to give that up. Why? Because giving that up means admitting that you were wrong. If you have no humility, you cannot admit that you were wrong, which means that you cannot correct your false beliefs and your false ideas. So you're never going to get past that point intellectually unless you can first develop that humility. So, so the moral and the intellectual development actually support each other, and you need to develop both. 
Okay, so that's the purpose of your full spiritual life. So that begs the question, what's the purpose now? What's the purpose of this life, this physical life? And the way I like to think about it is this life is just a day at the office. That this life is one small part of the whole spiritual life. So the purpose in this life is the same as the purpose in the spiritual life, but you're just trying to make a little bit of progress. You're just trying to leave the office at the end of the day saying, hey, I did a great job working towards my goals. I made a lot of progress towards the projects that I'm working on. And just like a day at the office, you probably have a lot of projects that you're working on. You're working on getting smarter. You're working on being more humble. You're working on being more loving and more compassionate. You're working on being more patient, right? You have all of these different projects that you're working on. And so your purpose in this physical life is to make as much progress as you possibly can in some of those projects. And you're not gonna be able to finish all of those projects in just one life. So, so don't pressure yourself into thinking that you have to be perfect in just 80 years or however much of this life that you're given. Your objective here is that when you are on your deathbed and when your body dies and you are going back up to the spiritual realm, you can look back on this lifetime and say, man, I got a lot done in the time that I was given. Okay, so that begs the question, how? How do you make yourself perfect so that you are worthy of the presence of God, so that you're worthy of nirvana, you're worthy of the kingdom of heaven? Now, chances are you probably already know some ways that you could be better, some ways that you could be better morally and intellectually that you could start implementing now. But if you need a starting point, I recommend coming up with a project, trying to do something that's good for the world or even just good for you. I mean, if you try to start a business, for example, or if you try to start a charity, or if you try to start a YouTube channel, um, you will find very, very quickly all of the places that you are lacking. It will become very obvious to you. And then you can work on addressing those shortcomings and thereby make yourself more perfect. Now, if you need some ideas of how to start, like what kind of project to work on, one of the best things you can possibly do is just sit down in a quiet place, ask God to direct you, to show you the project that would have the maximum benefit, and then just meditate and be quiet and wait for an answer. This works. I've done it many times and I've never been disappointed. But if you need a specific exercise to go through, if you think that would work better for you, I have one in this video all about how to pick out your perfect business. And it's not just about picking out a business, it's about picking out what you wanna do in life, whether that's a business or something else, that this exercise will help you with that. So check that out if you like. Now, once you've found the project that you wanna work on, um, the next part is, is uh, I'll quote from, I think it came from the Stoic philosophers that the obstacle is the way. That whatever you're working on, like I said, will make it very clear to you where your points of weakness are, where the possibilities for improvement exist, because they will be the points of resistance in keeping you from getting to your goal. And as you work on getting towards that goal, you work on getting better um, on those weaknesses. You get better at those qualities that are holding you back. So, for example, with me on this YouTube channel, or with me in my life in general, one of the, the biggest uh, stumbling blocks for me was that I was always very shy. I spent most of my life being, like, incapacitated by my shyness. And I realized that the reason that I was so shy was I was so driven by my ego. My pride was so enormous, and I think this is true with a lot of shy people. You know, you think of, of people being prideful, you think of them being boastful and loud and, and obnoxious, but uh, it, it works the other way too, in a lot of cases, maybe even most cases. The problem with, with people who are shy is that our pride is so big that it's, it's painful for us to put ourselves out there. It's the, the scariest thing in the world 
for us to put ourselves out there, to say something in public, to risk being rejected, to risk being criticized. Why? Because it would hurt our pride. So for me in my businesses and recording videos, one of the big obstacles that I've had to get over is pride. And I've become much more humble. I've developed a lot more faith. I've grown immensely because of this process. And you will too. You'll notice the places where you're lacking. And in order to, to complete your project, you will have to work on those areas. So pick out something that you can devote yourself to, some big project that's gonna do good for you, that's gonna do good for the world around you. Uh, I really like Jordan Peterson's advice when he says, just shoot for the greatest possible good that you can imagine, and that's a good place to start. And by the way, I wanted to offer you a little gift as a little token of my appreciation for supporting me on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description below. It's a free cheat sheet to the eight daily habits for success, happiness, and spiritual fulfillment. It's a short read, but I think you'll find that if you can implement these easy habits into your daily life, your life will get a lot better a lot faster. So click the link in the description below to get that. It's free. Again, that's my thank you to you for watching and supporting my channel. And if you want another video that I think you'll love, check out this video, which will show you how to change your life in just 14 days. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get all my future videos, and share this with anybody else who needs to hear it.